Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. On the right-hand side, you'll see bearish strategies. Bearish strategies could be done either as a debit put spread or as a credit call spread, both of which are bearish, and, and it looks just like a mirror image of the other one. You're hoping to profit as the underlying loses value. Your profit will start to increase and then eventually max out when the green line goes horizontal. And no matter how low the index goes, in the case of an index, it's not going to go to zero, but in the case of a stock, it could. And no matter how low it goes, your, your maximum profit is, is earned and it never gets any greater. If it goes the wrong direction and it increases, you can see that you'll start to lose money to a point and then you'll max out the, the amount that you lose and it will never get any worse. It's very nice to know before you do the trade exactly how much you can make and exactly how much you can lose. And comparing the two, you can decide whether or not it makes sense to do, uh, to do the trade. Now this is a little table that I put together that is helpful in helping you decide what strike prices to choose. So if you're bullish and you decide, okay, I'm bullish, I have two choices as we discussed. I can do a debit call spread or a credit put spread, but that doesn't help me to decide whether what strike prices do I choose. I mean, every in index, in many cases, indexes have strikes every dollar, and some have them every two and a half dollars, but there are a lot of them. So there are many different strikes to choose from. You decide on your strike prices based on your level of bullishness. If you are doing a debit call spread where you're buying one call and selling another, the one that you buy is the more expensive of the two legs, which is why it ends up being a debit trade. If you are extremely bullish, then you would typically use options that are out of the money. That's what OOTM stands for. And when I talk about a spread and I call it an out of the money spread, I'm typically talking about both the long leg and the short leg are out of the money at the time the trade is established. In other words, I'm buying a call option and I'm buying a put option and the strike prices of both are currently above the level of the index right now. And the reason I do that when I'm extremely bullish is because that's the way I can maximize my profit. If I'm very bullish and I believe that the index is going to rise sharply, Obviously, I want to make as much as I can possibly make. So with a up movement, if it becomes a large up movement, I'll make a large profit that way. Now, that's not to say that if I did an at-the-money or an in-the-money spread that I wouldn't also profit to the upside. But if I'm extremely bullish and I use a more conservative trade, such as an at-the-money or an in-the-money, I will make a profit, but my profit will be smaller. Now, if I'm just moderately bullish, I would use an at-the-money spread. And an at-the-money spread is where the long leg, in the case of a debit call spread, the long leg is in the money and the short leg is slightly out of the money. In other words, the index falls in between the two strike prices at the time the trade is established. With a moderate upside movement, I'll make a moderate profit. If I'm not quite so bullish or if I'm actually neutral to just slightly bullish, then I would use an, at, an in the money debit call spread. An in the money debit call spread was where both legs of the option of the spread are already in the money at the time the trade is established. And this ends up being, even though we would call it a bullish spread, what it actually is uh, is not necessarily a bullish spread. It is a not bearish spread. In other words, the stock doesn't necessarily have to go higher. The index doesn't necessarily have to go higher. It just has to not go lower. And that's the reason why we call this both a slightly bullish and a neutral strategy. Your goal when you establish a debit spread is always to have both options expire in the money. Now if I start out with a spread where both options are already in the money, as in this case, then the stock doesn't have to go any higher at all. And the two options are already in the position to, to earn their maximum gain with zero movement in the underlying index. So it's a very conservative trade. But if I were to do an at-the-money or an out-of-the-money spread, and I'm only moderately bullish, I'm going to need a significant upside movement in the underlying index in order to make money. If I 
move my strike prices too high and I get an upside movement, but it's a modest movement, I'll end up losing money because both the options won't end up in the money. Actually, they don't both have to be in the money to make any money, but if neither of them gets in the money, I'll lose. But if I start out with both of them in the money, then it's a conservative trade and the, the index can go just completely sideways and I'll make money. The other choice for bullish spread traders is a credit put spread. Personally, as a, as a frequent option trader, one of my all-time favorite types of spreads is a credit put spread, whether it's on an index, an ETF, or a stock. I like to get paid up front, and I like to, to uh, be able to speculate to the upside using a credit put spread. If I'm extremely bullish on an underlying, I would use a credit put, put spread where the strike prices are both in the money to begin with. Now, my objective on a credit spread is exactly the opposite of what it is on a debit spread. On a debit spread, I mentioned that your objective is always to have both options expire in the money. In the case of a credit spread, my objective is to have both options expire out of the money, worthless. Because I get paid up front, I want to keep as much of that credit as I can. Actually, I want to keep all of it. And the way for that to happen is to have both of the options expire completely worthless. Now, if I start out with both of my options in the money, and my goal is to have both of them expire worthless, then you can see that I'm going to need a pretty significant positive movement in the underlying in order for those options to both end up out of the money because they're both in the money to begin with. So I would only want to do an in-the-money credit put spread when I'm extremely bullish because I need those two, both options to end up out of the money. If I'm only moderately bullish, then I might use an at-the-money credit put spread where one option starts out in the money and one option starts out out of the money. In other words, the index is between the two strikes at the beginning. Then, in order for me to hit my maximum profit, again, where both options expire worthless, the, the index only has to rise up enough to exceed the strike on the one that's in the money. The other one's already out of the money. So I only have to get one out of the money. The other one already started out out of the money. And if I'm just slightly bullish, then I would use an out-of-the-money credit put spread. Again, my goal is to have both options expire worthless, and that's most likely going to happen if both options start out out of the money to begin with. That means they're both already in their max profit zone. So in other words, even though that's a bullish strategy, I can actually be neutral and still hit my max profit. This, the index just has to go flat or up. It just has to not go down. So again, you adjust your strike prices based on your level of bullishness. Now on the bear side, it works exactly the same. So if you look at the bottom half of this slide, you see that if I'm bearish, and I want to profit from a downside move, I could use a debit put spread, and I would use out-of-the-money puts if I'm extremely bearish. Again, I'm starting out with both options out of the money, but because it's a debit spread, my goal is to have both options be in the money. That means I'm going to need a significant downside movement in order for both options to end up in the money when they're both starting out out of the money. Jump down to the in-the-money debit put spread. If I'm just moderately bullish or actually or bearish or neutral, I would start out with both of my put spreads already in the money. Again, my goal is to have them both be in the money. If I start out with both of them already in the money, then it's very easy for them to end up in their max profit because they're already there. All I have to do is just ride out my time. Uh, by contrast, it works in reverse on the credit call side. On the credit call side, because it's a credit spread, the goal is to have both options expire worthless. If I start out with both options already out of the money, then the chances of them expiring worthless is quite high. So that's a very conservative trade. That's why I do that trade when I'm just slightly bearish or neutral. But if I want to be more aggressive and potentially make a much larger profit, I could use a credit call spread where both options are already in the money. Since my goal is for them to be out of the money, then I'm going to need a significant downside move in the index in order for both of them to end up out of the money so that both options can expire worthless. So you have to set your strike prices relative to your level of bearishness or bullishness. Again, it does, if you do a more conservative trade than you need, then you could still be profitable. But if your goal is to maximize your profit, you want to use the spread that's most aligned with your level of bullishness or your level of bearishness. And that way you can capitalize and make the largest profit. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.